and so for him to tell them that let the god that answers by fire let him be god he know they will take the challenge because in time past they have made fire fall but not when elijah was there oh you don't understand not when elijah was there do you understand what that means whenever you go wherever you go by your mere presence forces of darkness they will not be able to function as long as you are there they will not be able to operate they will not be able to function Job 29, the verse number 23. And they waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. I will take it again. And they waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain i want you to look at the person on your left on your right and just tell them waiting for the rain, waiting for the rain. you may be seated in the heavenly places the title of my message is waiting for the rain waiting for the let's pray heavenly father i pray in the name of jesus we have gathered again one more time in your presence to hear your word. Your people have not gathered to hear the voice of a man. They have gathered to hear your voice and your voice alone. And so, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will use me as your mouthpiece and your oracle to speak your whole counsel necessary for this service. And I pray in the name of Jesus that let the atmosphere, Father, be recalibrated and let it be released for unusual supernatural move of your spirit. And I pray that after this service, let everybody testify that of a surety. The Lord was in the midst of us and we heard the voice of God. Father, now I pray in the name of Jesus that you will give me the unction and the anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy. I pray in the name of Jesus that just as a clay in the hands of the potter, the same I am in your hands. Use me to be a blessing to your people. Use me as a conduit. Use me as a pipeline. Use me as a vessel to impart at your people this morning and let them live here blessed. I thank you for your presence all over this place. I thank you for the angelic activities. Jesus, I thank you that you are here. I thank you for coming down with the host of heaven. You are in our midst. This is your habitation and this is your dwelling place. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to say with me again for the very last time, waiting for the rain. Or oh, say it again, waiting for the rain. One of the things that I have come to realize um, about God, looking at history, is that anytime there is a calamity, anytime there is difficulty, Anytime there is any form of precarious situation, God always raises people. Anytime there is a storm, anytime there is adversity, anytime there is trouble, anytime there is disaster, calamity, catastrophe, anytime there is a satanic hurricane and there is a demonic tornado or tsunami god always raise either individuals or groups of people that will turn the tides around all the time 
there are always selected people that God has ordained. There is always selected people that God has ordained and anointed for such situation, such circumstances, and against such troubles and adversity. For instance, during the Second World War, in the United Kingdom, in Great Britain, God raised a great statesman by the name of Winston Churchill during the Second World War. It was a time of war. It was a time of battle. It was a time of adversity. It was a time of great storm. And the people need to hear for, from somebody that God has ordained. The people need to hear from somebody that God has anointed. The people need to hear from a leader. And so during those times in the United Kingdom, God raised Winston Churchill and throughout the Second World War, he motivated the people. He inspired the people. He challenged the people. He built the people's momentum even in the time of fear and desperation, in the time of when they were petrified, in the time when there was so much intimidation and panic but he was able because he was anointed and because God has elected and selected him for such a time as that he was able to inspire the people and get the people out of fear how true words true words he told the people I believe uh, 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 on one occasion when Adolf Hitler was advancing toward the United Kingdom, he told the people, we will meet them and fight them in the air. We will fight them on ground. When they want to fight in the sea, we will fight them in the sea. If they want to fight in the bushes, we will fight them in the bushes. We are ready for them. And because of those words that he spoke, he fired the people up and the fear disappeared and they received motivation and inspiration to withstand the onslaughts of Adolf Hitler. And so anytime there is adversity and there is calamity or there is disaster or there is a storm, God always raises people. Always, he has selected people, special people that he has anointed, that he raises. During the time of the slave trade in this country, where there was a strong apartheid, when there was segregation in this country, when there was an abominable things that were happening in this nation and, and the blacks were being used and more handled and more treated and marginalized. God raised Abraham Lincoln to stop the slave trade. It was a time of difficulty. It was a time of trouble. It was a time of adversity. It was a time of, of, of storm. But in the midst of the storm and in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the controversies, in the midst of of the pain and the anguish in the midst of the inhibitions and the limitation of the blacks God raised Abraham Lincoln and Abraham Lincoln stopped that evil so anytime there is a storm and there is a problem God raises people when America was liberated and had his emancip her emancipation from Great Britain, it was also a very difficult and challenging times for this nation. And this nation and the people have to come together, not in her strength, not in her abilities, not in her treasure, but in the strength of the almighty God, knowing that this nation got to be established on the foundations of the gospel and of the scriptures. And so God raised George Washington. 
who feared God and who walked with God. And so dedicated this nation to God through intercession on his knees. Anytime there is trouble, anytime there is problem, anytime there is adversity, God always raises either individuals or groups of people all the time. That is how God operates and that is how God functions. In the time of great adversity in the life of the children of the Israelites, when they were in the Egyptian captivity, when the Egyptians, Pharaoh, was using them to build the nation, and they were being used and exploited and manipulated and abused, God needed a deliverer who would deliver them from their storm and their adversity, from their pain. Guess what God did? God anointed Moses to be the deliverer. And through Moses, they had their deliverance. In a time of famine, when there was shortage of food and scarcity of food, globally, there was drought. Globally, and God knew that this drought and this scarcity of food is going to affect the children of the Israelites. Guess what God did? God raised Joseph. God raised Joseph to preserve the children of the Israelites. To preserve the descendants of Abraham. Because they were carrying a prophetic agenda and a prophetic purpose that came from the Almighty himself. And so at the time of drought and scarcity of food and shortage of food, when there was famine everywhere globally, God raised Joseph to preserve the children of the Israelites. Anytime there is a need, God always raises people. Anytime there is a need, he raises people. When the children of the Israelites were being oppressed and suppressed by the Midianites, and it was so bad to the extent that when the children of the Israelites farmed, and it is their harvest time. They don't enjoy their harvest. The Midianites will come and take all the harvest from them. And they were heavily levied when it comes to taxes. They were oppressed. They were suppressed. They were depressed. They didn't know what to do to get out of this Midianite captivity and suppression. But in the midst of the suppression and the oppression of the Midianite, God raised Gideon to turn the tides of their captivity, to turn the tables around, and for them to come out of their captivity. When the Philistines were oppressing the children of the Israelites, using them guess what happened god raised something to withstand their onslaught to withstand their attacks to withstand their blasphemous words against the almighty god and through something they pushed back so anytime there is a problem anytime there is a need when God wants to fulfill his divine purpose, his divine plan, at a certain season and at a certain time, in a certain dispensation or generation, he always has people that he has anointed, he has elected, he has selected, and he has ordained for that special purpose, for that special situation, and for that special condition. My question is this. Have you been anointed for something? Have you been ordained for something? When Haman, Satan, in 
incarnate, a typology of the devil, wanted to extinguish and to annihilate the entire Jewish race in the time of Esther. And he put his plan together. And his plan was so perfect that he was ready to execute it and to annihilate the entire Jewish race. God looked at it and saw the problem and the situation and God said, this cannot happen. But God couldn't count down himself to do it. Guess what he did? He raised Esther and raised Mordecai to avert the satanic plan the demonic agenda, the conspiracy from the kingdom of darkness against the entire Jewish race. And by these two people, Esther and Mordecai, the plan was averted. When God himself wanted to come to this planet earth to reconcile man back to him and to redeem humanity, God knows that he has put laws in place that the only legal entry point to the planet earth is through the womb of a woman. And God knew that if he has set laws in place, he couldn't violate the laws of nature. And so God, who is spirit, God who is almighty and who is all-knowing, God who is limitless and boundless, wrapped himself as a flesh in the womb of a young damsel who was a virgin by the name of Mary. And there were so many young damsel and so many women at that time. But she was the one that was ordained for that particular purpose for that particular mission and for that particular assignment isn't it possible that some of you under the sound of my voice you are ordained and you have been anointed for a particular purpose and for a particular assignment because you are not here by incident. You are not here by coincidence. You are not here by accident. You are here by the divine providence of God. You are not here to while away time. And you are not here to occupy space. You are not here to exist. You are here to make influence and to make impact. You are here to shift atmospheres. You are here to create atmospheres. You are here to leave an indelible mark on your generation. You are here to transform societies and cities. You are here to be a presence career and God's glory career. And if you are a presence career and God's glory career, then you must be on a mission. You must be on assignment. You are not here just to be here. You are not here just to occupy space. You are here to do something that God has ordained and called you to do. We are living in a time and in a day that the church is decaying very rapidly. Decaying very, very rapidly. We are living in a time and in a day where the church don't experience the power of God, the presence of God, the glory of God. It is as if what we read in the Bible was fabrication. It was fictitious. Because there are some of you that ask this question. If God did all these miracles that we read from the scriptures... And all these miracles and signs and wonders and the supernatural activities that we have read in the scriptures. How come that in our day and in our time, we are not experiencing such move of God and such power of God? How come that we are not experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit like in the days past and like in Bible history and even in church history? Are we truly serving the same God? 
Has God changed? No, he has not changed. Now, for you to ask such questions, it means that there is a problem. For you to even be contemplating on such things, it means that there is an epidemic. There is a disaster that needs to be resolved, that needs to be eradicated, that needs to be erased from the body of Christ and from the church. And like I said earlier on, whenever there is problem and there is a situation, wherever there is a condition and wherever there is a calamity, a disaster, a trouble, adversity, God always raises people. Either individual people or he raises people cooperatively as a group. And in the times that we are, there is so much trouble. There is so much problems. There is so much issues. The world is looking for answers. Nations are looking for answers. Governments are looking for answers. Because why? Their intellectual capabilities and their logical comprehensions has filled them. Their know-how has filled them. Their smartness and intelligence and brilliance has filled them. And they are looking for answers. They are looking for antidotes. They are looking for remedy. But they have nowhere to go. And they have nobody to go to. And there is nobody from the church and from the body of Christ that will be a spokesperson for God. And so all these people end up going back to the devil and looking for answers, looking for solutions, looking for remedies. Why? Because there is so much chaos in the church and in the body of Christ that the spirit of God, the presence of God, Christ is no more part of our services. He is no more part of our conferences. And amazingly, nobody is seeing it. The bitter truth is that nobody is even realizing it. Nobody is perceiving it. We come to church as usual. We have our services as usual. It has become a fan club. It has become a social club where we come and we mingle and we interact with each other and we get to see each other and we get to wear our nice beautiful dresses because we don't know where to go to show our dresses the only place we can come to show our dresses and show our makeups and show our shoes and what we are wearing is the church and so guess what the church has become a faction parade Who is wearing Gucci? Who is wearing Louis Vuitton? Who is wearing Armani? What are you wearing? So that is how the church has become. Faction parade. Social club. We come and we have good time. But I want you to understand, the church is not for good time. You don't come to church to have good time. You come to church to have an encounter with the power of God. You come to church for your life to be metamorphosed, for, for your life to be transformed and changed. You come to church so that your destiny will be altered by the almighty God. You come to church so that the Lord would touch you with his mighty hand and with his gracious hand. We don't come to church to have a good time. We come to church to experience heaven. We come to church to experience the demonstration of the power of God and of the presence of God. When we come to 
to church. We don't come to church to enjoy the flesh. We come to church to enjoy the spirit of God and the activities of the supernatural. When we come to church, we don't want to go back the same way we came in because nobody comes to the presence of God and come to church without the touch of the master. That is why we have problem in the church because if we are not experiencing divine encounters, if we are not experiencing supernatural encounters, if there are no angelic activities and there are no creative miracles and signs and wonders and there is no demonstration of the spirit of God and of the power of God, then we have a problem. Then we have issues. But I want you to understand, some people may come to church for fanfare. Some people will come to church as a social club. But there is always a group of people and there is always a group of people that God has selected, elected, anointed, appointed, and he has placed his hand upon them. Who don't want to come to church to have fanfare? Who don't want to come to church to show off their addresses? They come to church because they need God. They come to church because they want to hear the voice of God. They come to church because they have issues in their body and they need God to heal them. They come to church because they need direction and guidance. And the direction and guidance that they need, they cannot get it from anywhere. They can only get it from the Almighty God. And so they come to church to hear the voice of God. There are some that come to church. They are so hungry for God and they want more of God. They said, God, I have seen your glory, but I want to see more of your glory. I have seen your presence, but I want to see see more of your presence you have revealed yourself to me but I want you to reveal yourself to me one more time I am a prayer warrior but I want you to take me to another dimension in prayer somebody shout fire when there is an epidemic when there is trouble God always at all time raise these people and let me tell you there is problem in the body of Christ what is the problem we are going through drought season there is a scarcity of power there is a scarcity of the presence of God there is a scarcity of the glory of God there is a scarcity of the habitation of God. Our churches are no longer the dwelling places and the habitation of God. Why? Because most of our services, instead of God being in the service, he is outside the service. That is why the church is chaotic. That is why the church has become an entertainment center whereby people come and they have pleasure. But let me tell you, when there is power, when there is glory, when there is presence, you cannot even come to the church with your fornication. You cannot come to the church with your idolatry. You cannot come to the church as a liar. You cannot come to the church as a backbiter and a gossiper. You cannot come to the church with your filthiness. You will not come to the church and lift up your dirty hands in the time of worship and in the time of praises. You won't come to church because of your dress or because of somebody that you want to meet. When you come to church, you don't come to church to play God. You come to church to have an encounter with the glory of God. God, we need your glory. God, we need your power. God, we need your presence. We need you to make this place the habitation of your dwelling place. We need the supernatural. We need miracles. We need signs and wonders. We need healing. We need a revival. Let your rain fall. Somebody shout, let your rain fall. You may be seated. Because the church has backslidden. Because the church is lukewarm. We have so many organizers, but few agonizers. When the church backslides, when the church goes into slumber, 
when the church lampstand is lampstand is removed many organizers few agonizers many singers few worshipers many players and payers few prayers many pastors few restless many interferences few intercession when the church goes to sleep when we come to church we don't come to pray we come to play when the church goes to sleep but the scripture we just read the bible says that we are waiting for rain we are waiting for rain why are we waiting for the rain we are waiting for the rain because there is drought we are waiting for the rain because there is a scarcity of rain the rain represents his spirit the rain represents his glory the rain represents his power the rain represents his presence that is why the bible says demon spirit operates only in dry places where there is no moisture where there is no rain where there is no water demons operate there forces of darkness operates there the kingdom of darkness makes that place their habitation but where there is rain the rain of god's spirit the rain of god's power evil spirits don't mess around witches and wizards don't mess around the kingdom of darkness don't mess around the reason why is the reason why the kingdom of darkness is invading our churches and messing our destiny and our families up and messing everything that is around us up is because the church is in a drought no rain there is scarcity but guess what there is always a remnant a remnant that says that we need rain that is why the bible says there are some that are waiting for the rain and i came to submit to somebody here in prayer city and in eagles chapel we refuse to operate in droughts we refuse to operate in scarcity of rain we are waiting for god's rain the rain of his revival a revival that will take this city by storm listen to me we are not here to just occupy a small city like hostel we are here to occupy and to take these states we are not here to play church we are here to manifest the power of god to manifest the glory of god no wonder paul said i don't preach to you by the persuasive by the persuasive and enticing words of human wisdom but i preach to you in the demonstration of the spirit and of power beloved we are sick and tired of human agenda and philosophy we are sick and tired of human ideology we need the demonstration of the spirit and of power we are sick and tired of motivational messages we need messages that will fire us up we need messages that will set us ablaze we need messages that will make us seek the face of god and wanting more of him we need messages that will make us walk in holiness walk in righteousness walk in purity and separate ourselves from the flesh and the things of the world we need messages that will bring heavens down we need messages that will bring the fire of god down we need messages that will bring the latter rain down the bible says that those who are waiting for the rain they have opened their mouth wow listen to me prayer city eagles chapel we have opened our mouth wow because we want to see god we want to see revival we want to experience the end time move of god's spirit we want to be part of the end time agenda and the end time plan of god that is why you and i we are not here by accident we have been ordained for special purpose we have been called for special purpose we are nation shakers we are continuing 
minute movers. We are community transformers. I don't know who I came to talk to. If you are complaining that God, why did you put me in this family? This family with all kinds of trouble. You are there because you are the savior. You are there because you are the agent of change. You are there because you are the trailblazer. You are there because you are the... You, you are the one that will bring about the glory of God and the goodness of God and the power of God. You are the one that will bring them to the knowledge and to the power of Christ. You are the one that will bring them into the house of God. You are anointed. You are elected. You are selected for such a time as this. You have God's DNA. Listen to me. That is why no power can stop you. No demon can stop you. No human being can stop you. No spirit can stop you. No condition can stop you. No circumstance can stop you. No situation can stop you. Receive the power of God. I said receive the power of God. The rain of revival is falling. I said the rain of revival is falling. The rain of his spirit is falling. The rain of his glory is falling. The rain of holiness is falling. The rain of purity is falling. Somebody shout, I receive it. You may be seen. Come on, work it. We are waiting for the move of the Spirit. We are waiting for the power of God. And the reason why we are waiting is because we are sick and tired of this situation. We are sick and tired. Listen to me. You don't need to be afraid of anything. You are elected for such a time as this. And if you are elected for such a time as this, it means that you are also empowered for such a time as this. <laughs> if you have been anointed for such a time as this, it means that you have been given the authority, the authority, city, the temerity to be able to withstand all the fiery darts and all the wiles of the devil. And so there is absolutely nothing that can intimidate you or push you back. The other day, God, I had an encounter and in the encounter, I saw myself lifted up to a place, a city. And I saw that the city where I was, there was a life boxing fight that was going on and everybody has gathered around their TV sets and they were watching the fight all of them and this person that was fighting was a champion who has not been defeated before so I saw people gathered around their TV sets groups of people at the different 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 places they have gathered watching this boxing. So I was looking at the people that were watching the boxing and I was watching the boxing, but I wasn't part of the group. I was isolated. And it was as if the people couldn't see me, but I could see them. And suddenly, the person that was fighting life match that was fighting, the person just appeared to me. So I was looking at the person and the and his name was written on his chest. And he was bare chested. And he was looking at me. So I was confused. So I was asking, ah, how can this man be fighting life somewhere and be here at the same time? I was confused. So I will look at the TV screens. The fight is going on. The people are watching. And the man is standing there. And I would look at the man, look at the, I was so confused. And then the man looked at me, and the man said, do you like boxing? <laughs> I don't only really like, I like wrestling, I like everything. <laughs> if it got to be fight. Yeah. So, before I could respond, he said, I could see that you have not boxed. You are not a professional boxer, but you love soccer. But let me teach you something. So, <clears throat> I stood there 
And then he started showing me how to throw punches. And it was as if we were the only people there. Meanwhile, there were numerous of people. There was a crowd that have gathered at different places watching. But nobody was looking at our direction. And we were in the midst of the people that were watching the fight. So he was teaching me how to be a professional boxer and how to punch your opponent in the place where it will hurt. So I was standing there and he was teaching me and I was watching. And I was watching. Suddenly, there was a strong voice that started speaking against me. And the voice was this. The voice started speaking about champions in the past who he has flopped. Champions in the past who thought they couldn't be defeated. But he defeated all of them. So he started mentioning names and was going on and on and on and I was listening. And then suddenly I heard a host of voices from heaven. Yes. And the host counter responded to what the voice was saying. And the host of those voices said, yes, in, in time past, you flopped those people. You defeated them. You made them fail. But not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. I was just getting ready to come and pray at 12 midnight when I had that encounter. And as I was driving to the church, I keep on seeing that revelation and that vision. And what was echoing in my spirit is what the host of heaven said. Not this one. Why did I tell you this? I told you this to say this. Not you. <laughs> Listen. Not you. The reason why they cannot touch you is because you are in the divine agenda of God. You are part of God's end time plan. And so it doesn't matter what they orchestrate. It doesn't matter what they plan. It doesn't matter their cohesion. It will not work and it will not prevail. Why? Because you are alive today because of the divine counsel of God and because of the divine plan of God. You are in God's agenda and you must fulfill that agenda and assignment and mission. And so any tongue that rises up against you, that tongue will be condemned. Any imagination that exalts itself above the wisdom and the knowledge of God, that imagination will come under the subjection and the submission of the will of God. That is why those who are saying they will kill you, they know that they cannot kill you. Those who are saying they will destroy you, they know within themselves that they cannot destroy you because you are not here for an accident. You are not here to waste time. You are not here to occupy space. You are carrying a prophetic agenda. You are carrying a prophetic purpose. What is the prophetic purpose? You are part of the generation and of the remnant that God is raising and lifting to make sure that this rain comes down. The latter and the former rain. I don't know who I came to talk to, but I came to announce to somebody this morning that before you leave here, you will be wet with this rain. You will be soaked with this rain. You will be entrenched in this rain. I came to announce to somebody the rain of God God's presence is coming down. The reign of God's power is coming down. You are becoming another man. You are becoming another woman. Ah, your destiny is being altered. You are being transfigured by the glory of God, by the power of God. Georgia, get ready. This city cannot be a city of homosexuality. Georgia, get ready. They are remnants. They are righteous people. They are intercessors. They are holy people. There are still saints left on this 
land in this city. We are taking this city by storm. We are taking this nation by storm. I see revival all over this city and this nation. I see revival fires. I see the glory of God. Somebody shout, I receive it. You may be seated. The rain must come down. We need the rain. We need the rain. We need the rain. We need the rain. And the rain that comes down, it is not just rain that God sent. God descends as rain. He descends as rain. I have seen him done it before in the time of Elijah. <laughs> The Bible says that the Baal prophet, they called they are God, but they are God they didn't respond. Elijah stood there and Elijah said, man, you keep on calling your God, he has traveled. <laughs> keep on calling him, he will come back. He said, your God is sleeping. Wake him up. He said, your God is having a meeting and so he's not hearing what you are saying. Stop the meeting so that he could hear you. Elijah was making fun of them. Listen, in this end time, we will make fun of the devil. <laughs> we will make fun of the works of darkness. We will make fun. We will make fun of palm readers and psychics. We will make fun of occultic practitioners. We will make fun of luminatis. We will make fun of satanists. We will make fun of the world because they will see our God not in the spirit but in the physicality and in the tangibility of his glory and of his power. Those are the days that we are living in. Those are the days that we are living in. So call upon your God. They did everything. Their God didn't show up and fire didn't come down. And you have to check the history. Why Elijah even said that let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Do you know the reason? He didn't just come up with that. Because the Baal prophet believed that Baal is a God of fire. And so for him to tell them that let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. He know they would take the challenge. Because in time past, they have made fire fall. But not when. Elijah was there. Oh, you don't understand. Not when Elijah was there. Do you understand what that means? Whenever you go, wherever you go, by your mere presence, forces of darkness, they will not be able to function. As long as you are there, they will not be able to operate. They will not be able to function. Why? Because Light and darkness cannot cohabit. The light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The weakness of darkness is the appearance of light. And the strength of darkness is the absence of light. Light moves forward. Darkness moves backward. So as long as his presence was there, they couldn't function. They couldn't operate. Hey, listen. When this rain comes down, yes, sir. Yes, sir. and we are entrenched and soaked in the rain, let me tell you, the witches in your family, when they hear you are coming, they will take off. Yes. You know when the Bible says, the wicked man flew with when no man pursued him. They will run without you pursuing him. I am talking about power. Somebody shout Power! power. So they call upon their God to bring down fire. Fire couldn't come down. Watch this. Elijah prayed. And when you read the prayer, the prayer is less than three minutes. By the time he could barely finish the prayer, the fire fell. Now, the fire that fell wasn't an ordinary fire that fell. It was God himself that came down as fire. Why? 
the Bible says that and Elijah built an altar. After he had built the altar with the 12 stones, guess what he did? He asked them to get 12 buckets of water. He built the altar and then the altar was entrenched in water. Now, you got to understand that water and fire don't agree. If they agree, fire service men will be out of job. That is why when your house, God forbid, catches fire and the firemen shows up, they don't use fire to quench fire. They use water to quench the fire. Stay with me. And so if Elijah poured 12 buckets of water on the altar until the altar was soaked, covered with water, then it means that it is impossible for an ordinary fire to come upon the altar and burn everything into ashes. Because if it is an ordinary fire, even when it comes down, immediately it touches the water, it must go off. The fire will go out immediately. But because it was God that descended as fire, the fire didn't only consume the altar, it consumed the water also. No wonder the Bible says, our God is a God of a consuming. And so he came down as fire. He came down as fire. Why am I saying this? This rain that is coming down, it is not coming down as rain. It is him that is coming down. He is coming down in the form of rain. The days when people will be sick and they will come to church and they will go back sicker, those days are over. The days when people will come to church and they are demonized and oppressed by demonic forces and spirit and they go back more possessed and demonized, those days are over. When you enter into the house of God, without anybody laying hands on you, you will experience your deliverance. You will experience your miracle. You will experience your breakthrough. Let me conclude on this. There are some that are all light. And there are some also that are all fire. But you see, the times that we are in, you cannot be all light and be all fire without being both. You must be light and fire. Light is a symbol of illumination. It's a symbol of revelation. And so we cannot just walk in revelation and illumination without having fire attached. What is the fire? Power. And so we need revelation. We need illumination. We need hindsight, insight, foresight, and sight. With light. But we must also function with power. In these times when the rain is coming down, we will not only be soaked with rain, but we will be entrenched in light and also in fire. We will walk not in ignorance. We will walk with revelation and we will operate by power. Somebody shout power. power. Fire is not only for power, but it is also for purification. Purification. Why purification? Anything that is in us that is not of God, the fire will burn it away. Will burn it out. Anything that is in us 
that is not God ordained, God planted. Yes, the fire will burn it and the fire will purify anything that is of God that is unpolished. Gold is not gold until it has gone through fire. No wonder Job said, throughout all the days of my hard labor, I will wait on my God until my change come. That after I have gone through the fire, I will come out as pure gold. Listen to me. Get ready. There are some of you at your workplaces. By your mere presence, people will just be falling. Tomb. 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 They said you shouldn't pray. They said you shouldn't mention the name of Jesus. You have not mentioned the name of Jesus. You didn't pray. You were just there. But because you are a carrier of power and of presence, your presence will be slaying them one by one. Boom. 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 I remember I read something about the late Ben Sini Dahosa when he just he went to God in Lise Bible School in Texas. And the Bible school was supposed to be two years. Um for completion and for certification. Now, after a year, he went to God in Lisa and told God in Lisa, God in Lisa, please, sir, I can't be here and be wasting time when people are dying and suffering. Please graduate me so I could go. So God in Lisa accepted. And in those times, whilst he was there, the man threw out. The whole 12 months was fasting and praying. So they organized and put together his graduation and they graduated only him. Only him. And he was the only person that God in Lise graduated. After the graduation, he died. His classmates never had the opportunity for God in Lisa to graduate them. When he arrived in Benin City, the people that came to meet him at Benin City to help him with his luggages and other things, everybody that was like about five foot away Everybody was falling at the airport. Everybody. He didn't pray. He didn't say receive it. He didn't do anything. Just come in. By the time, five feet away from him, you are slain. Everybody was just falling. Boom, boom, boom. That is the kind of power I'm talking about. Power. I'm talking about. In his day and his time, when he want to have a crusade, you know what he does? He would just go to the street, look for some cripple, or a blind man or woman who everybody knows, and he would carry the person, bring that person into the midst of the crowd. And then he won't say, oh, I'm coming to do a crusade. He would just put that person there. He would lay hands. And the person will be healed instantaneously. And by the time the person is healed instantaneously, guess, guess what happened? The crowd gathers. He will preach to them. By the time the crowd leaves, they are all born again. <laughs> I'm talking about careers of the presence of God. He hosted T.L. Osborne for a crusade. 500,000 people showed up in the Lagos Stadium, Sports Stadium. Now, the following day, the government called his office and they told him that he cannot have the crusade the following day because, number one, the people have messed up the grass. Number two, the national team was going to play with Cameroon. And so, there cannot be crusade in the stadium. And he said, it was last minute. The venue cannot be changed. It has been advertised and everything. So, 
the person that was in charge of the stadium, the boss that controls and manages the stadium and everything, he went to him and he said, listen, this thing, we have planned it ahead. How are we going to change the venue? The man looked at him and said, what I have said is final. And if you know the history of Benson Idahosa, you don't talk to him like that. If you don't take care, you will be relocated. <laughs> when I talk about relocation, not from one place to another, you will move from this planet to another planet. So the guy, the guy was like, no, it's not going to happen. Your crusade is canceled. You can't have it in the stadium. We have a match tomorrow. He tried to persuade the guy. No way. So he left. And then he came back and he told the guy, if you don't make me have this crusade, for 24 hours the whole day tomorrow, there will be thunderings and lightnings and there will be storm and rain will be falling the whole day. The match will not come on. <laughs> the president had it. And knowing the history of the man, that there was a world witchcraft conference that was supposed to be held in Benin City, he stopped it. He told the man. The man was bragging he was a witch. And in Dahosa, on television screen, the whole nation was watching. And Idahosa said, Ah, I know that there is there are no witches here. I know there is no witch here. In fact, all the witches have gone. And then he said, Even you, you are not a witch. But if you say you are a witch, say it right now that I'm a witch, and I will kill you now. The man said, I'm not. <laughs> and so knowing the history, the president, Babangida, called him and said, Sir, we are sorry for offending you. Is it possible you can have your crusade, you know, uh, later in the evening? Uh, it's your choice. If you want to, later in the evening, the match was supposed to be played in the afternoon, but we'll shift it to the morning, early morning, so that you can have your crusade at your usual time. And he said, Mr. President, that is okay with me, as long as I will have my crusade in the same stadium. And then when he finished, the president said, please, this is a Muslim. He said, please, can you please pray for our national team? <laughs> that they will win this match because this match is very crucial. And he told the president, don't worry. Nigeria, the Super Eagles will win by two goals to zero. And that was exactly what happened. I am talking about power. Power. Being a Career of the presence of God. Amen. One day he hosted Ora Robert and his team. And there was an emergency. They have to leave and come back to the States. They didn't have ticket. They didn't have ticket to return back at the time that they are supposed to. Idarosa ran to the tarmac when an aircraft was flying here and stopped the whole aircraft with the passengers on the tarmac and said, open the door for me. They opened the door. He entered. He said, I have three special guests that came to preach for me. They have to be in the state today. Three people, vacate your seat so that they can sit down and get to the state. Three people stood up. The sad thing is this. The three people that stood up wearing Christians, they were Muslims. And when they stood up from the aircraft, Idahosa looked at 
all of them and asked all of them to kneel down. All of them knelt down. He prayed for them. But he was wearing something we call, is it bubu? How do you call it? Bubu. You know, it's, it's Obada, Nigerians call it. I don't know how to explain that if you don't know that. Because they have this, you know, you, you, you put it like this. You want, the, during uh, International Day, if God baptized me, I will wear that. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you will know the dress I'm talking of. So he blessed these three Muslims who were also friends, who vacated their seat for Ora Robert and his two other uh, uh, assistants to sit in the flight. They knelt down and he prayed for them. And it was Dangote, the richest man now, as we are speaking, on the whole continent of Africa. He took his boo-boo and put it on him. And he told him that you, from today, you will be so rich, you will not know what to do with your riches. Amen. And his other two friends, his other two friends also are multi-billionaires. But him, that he put his boo-boo, his dress, on him as a mantle is the most richest on the continent of Africa. I'm talking about power. Don't come, to, don't come to church and be hearing stories. That's why I'm not inviting anybody again who will come and tell us stories. Stories. Stories that make children sleep. Nobody. Nobody. You won't see them again. When you see somebody here, you know that this person is serious. He's a, he's a power career. Power career. When the rain comes down, those are the dimensions and the realms you walk in. When we are soaked and entrenched in the rain, you don't go for small things. Why will you stay a low voltage when you can have a higher voltage? There is rain that is coming down. It's the rain of his glory. The rain of his power. Get ready for it. Rise on your feet. Are you ready to pray? All leaders, I want you to stand straight for me. Like this, in a parallel line. All leaders, come forward. I want the next line behind them. Hold your hands, join your hands. All leaders. The line is too long. You can start another one at the back. Please join. Church, join your hands. Project the scripture for me. Job 29, the verse number 23. I am following a prophetic direction that the Lord spoke to me about. And they waited for me as for the ray. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. Listen, we need the latter rain to come down. He said, Acts of me rain in the time of the latter rain, and I will give you rain. We need the rain of God's revival. We need the presence of God and the power of God. We need the glory of God in such a way that it will not just be us here. It will bring this city to its needs. It will sweep this city and affect the states all over us. We want to hear people say, if you want to meet God and experience the glory and the power of God, go to prayer city. If you have issues and problems that cannot be solved, go to prayer city. 
if you have incurable disease or any form of infirmity, go to prayer city. If you are being oppressed by the devil, go to prayer city. If you want to experience the tangibility of God's glory and presence and power, go to prayer city. That is what I am trusting God for. That is why our mouth is open wide. We are hungry for God, more of God. We want to hear when, people's, when people are having issues, say, ah, why are you going through so much lack? Why are you at a place where you are not operating in abundance and in an overflow? And then another will say to, to, to one, go to prayer city. When you go there, you will walk in overflow. When you go there, you will experience riches and prosperity. Listen to me. I don't want us to come to church and waste time. Please, we cannot waste time. We cannot come to church and go back the same. We cannot remain the same. We cannot. We cannot come to church with our troubles, go back with our troubles. We can't come to church with our sicknesses and go back with our sicknesses. Let me tell you, physicians may not have the remedy or medication for your sickness, for your disease, but I want you to understand that we are serving a God that is a mighty healer and there is no sickness and disease or infirmity that he cannot heal. The Bible says in Luke 9, 1, and he said, and he gave the disciples authority and power to cast out all devils and to heal all diseases. So when you come to the house of God, whatever infirmity you are carrying, you should be healed. Completely healed. You cannot be buried in the house of God. It is not possible. It's the manufacturer of womb, how can you come and meet him? And still your womb is dead. It's not possible. It's not possible. If it has to be replaced, it will be replaced. Because if human beings will invent stuff and know that the thing that they have invented may have defect or default or problem and will need to be changed, parts need to be changed. And as a result of that, they create parts. For the things that they have invented. How much more our heavenly father. He created us. And he has body parts. Whatever you need. You can take it today. Today. You, I don't care what has been removed. Any, any organ that has been removed from your body. You can have fresh one today. I don't care. Whatever sickness. That you have been carrying all these years. You will be healed today. I don't care how many people have called you Barry. Today, you will be fruitful. You will carry your baby. A year by this time, you will be dedicating your child. I don't care who have called you single. Let me tell you, God is up to something. There is a reign of God's power. There is a reign of God's presence. And the reason why we are holding our hands, we are holding our hands to tell God that we are in it together. We want this together. We want your habitation together. We want this reign together. We want this power together. We want this lightning and fire together. We want the supernatural together. We want the miraculous together. We want the healing and creative miracles and notable miracles together. That is why we have joined our hands because we want it together. Are you ready to pray? Are you sure you are ready to pray? I want us to pray with passion and the prayer is this God let the rain of your spirit fall on us. Let it fall. Let us be soaked. Let us be entrenched in this rain. Let us be soaked in this rain. Let people come here and witness your power and your glory. And let them say of a surety and of a truth. God is in this place. Are you ready to pray? I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray. 
to ask God for this rain. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I want you to pray with passion. Rokoposa Paya Suka Bahata Lia Kapata Kapahaya Father we pray according to Job 29 the verse number 23 we have been waiting for this rain the rain of your spirit we have been waiting we have been waiting we have been waiting for this rain Father come down as rain Father we have opened our mouth to be filled with this rain let be wet in this way. Let us be soaked in this way. Let us be entrenched in this way. We are asking you both for the former rain and the latter rain. Let the rain of the end times come down. Let the rain of the last days come down. Let the rain, let the rain, let the rain, the rain of your spirit, the rain of your power, the rain of your glory, the rain of your presence. Let it come down. Mataka. Marua kapataka, hey shaka, marua saka bahata, lea kabo papaya. Somebody lift up your voice. We need the power of God. We need the demonstration of His Spirit and of His power. We need supernatural activities. We need divine activities. We need supernatural encounters. We need angelic activities. We need the miraculous. We need signs and wonders. We need a revival that will sweep this city, that will bring this city to its knees. We need a revival that will cause people to come from far and near to this place to experience your glory. We need a revival and a reign of transformation. We need the revival and a reign of purity, of holiness. Matua kabe papa, reka buli asaka. Matia kabo papa, reka buti kibiri akata. Lia kabo papa, roko po saka. Matua kabe papa, raka banti kibili. Maria kabo sa, mataya kapa, raka banta kapa. Lia kabo papa, reka buli asaka. Matua kabe papa, raka banta kapa. Lia kabiri asa. Marua kabo saka, matia kabe, reka banta kabahaya, lia kabo papa, raka manta kabahaya, malua kabo papa, raka bulia saka matia kaba, raka bo saka. We need a revival of peace. We need a revival of prosperity. We need a revival of favor. We need a revival of your glory. We need a revival of your power. We need a revival of your presence we need the revival of the miraculous we need the revival of the supernatural God come down with the host of heaven God come down with the host of heaven come down with the cloud of witnesses We want to 
to experience the end time glory we want to experience the end time power we want to experience the end time miraculous we want to experience the power of the age to come matia kabo rakabanta kaba rekabosa matia kabe rekabulia kato kabe let the spirit of prayer let the spirit of prayer let it fall let the rain of prayer let it fall let the rain of prayer let it fall let the rain of worship let it fall let the rain of true worship true praise in the spirit let it fall matia kaba rakabo saka matua kabe papa rekabuli akata rakabantaka liakabo papa rokopo saka matua kabe papa rakabanti kibili liakabo papa rakabo saka mataka papa rakabo saka matia kaba let the heavens open let the heavens open let the heavens open let the heavens open let the clouds let the clouds empty themselves of every rain let the clouds empty themselves of every rain we need your power let the prophetic rain fall let the apostolic rain fall maria kabe papa rokopo saka matua kabe papa rekabuli akato rakabiri akate kabe rokopo saka matia kabo papa rakabiri akata rakabo saka mataya kabo rekabuli akate matii kabe papa lia kabo papa rakabuli akapa rakabuli akate kabe rakabuli asaka we need a revival that will bring transformation we need a revival that will save souls we need a revival that will manifest your power that will manifest your glory matia kabo rekabuli akata rakabuli akata we need your healing power we need signs and wonders we need the miraculous let gifts be activated let the gifts be activated by your sakai by your sakai release fresh oil release fresh oil let there be a baptism of fire let there be a baptism of fire let there be a baptism of fire pour out your spirit pour out your spirit pour out your spirit pour out your spirit rekabosha matia kabo papa rekabiri akata lia kabo papa rokopo saka matua kabe papa hey shaka bahaya rakabo lia kabe rakabanta ka lia kabo papa rekabuli asaka matua kabe papa rekabo saka mate kabe rekabo papa lia kabo papa rakabanta ka lia kabo papa rokopo saka matua kabe papa lia kabiri akata lia kabo papa rakamanta ya kabe maleka be malua kabe papa rakabo saka matia kabo papa lia kabo papa god make this place your habitation your habitation your dwelling place your dwelling place let the shakana glory let it fill this temple let it fill this church let it fill this house let it sweep this city let it sweep this nation matia kabo papa rekabuli akate let there be a divine stairs let there be a divine stairs let there be a divine turn around matua kabe rekabo papa rakaboli akabe rakabanta kapa rokopoli asaka matua kabe papa lia kabo papa rakabanta ye malua kabe papa rekabo saka mataya kabe rakabuli akabe lekabanta ya kabo rekabuli akabe matia kabo papa malua kabe papa let the powers of darkness in this city let them bow let them bow to your glory let territorial spirit let them bow to this revival let principalities and powers let them bow to this revival mate kabe rokopo sa mataya kabo papa 
let your mighty hand let your glorious hand let it come upon this church let it come upon us soak us with your rain let us be wet with your rain give us a brand new heart give us a brand new spirit in the name of Jesus a brand new heart and a brand new spirit we need the move of the Holy Spirit we need the move of your power we need the move of your glory in the name of Jesus now you can leave each other the next thing that I want us to do is this I want you to clap your hands and begin to pray and wait I want you to clap your hands and begin to pray what is the prayer God from today let there be an open heavens over the church let there be an open heavens and we are praying and we are telling God that God from today we don't want to have ordinary services we don't want to have the usual services we need your glory we need your power in our worship in our praise in our prayer in our intercession in the word anybody that enters into this house and enters into the premises from the parking lot let the power of god hit them let the glory of god hit them let this revival hit them please clap your hands and begin to pray we declare an open heavens Let this 
city catch fire let this nation catch fire the fire of your presence the fire of revival the fire of your power catch fire 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 A revival of purity, a revival of transformation, a revival of emancipation, a revival of liberty, a revival of breakthrough, a revival of peace, a revival of prosperity, and the riches and the favor of God. worship let it come down the spirit of worship the spirit of praise true worship true praise Recapo papa, recapo papa, recapo papa, recapo papa, 
We want more of you, God. 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 We want more of your presence. We want more of your glory. We want more of your power. We want more of your spirit. We want more. 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 Let the rain fall. Let the heavens open. We cannot have ordinary services. We cannot have the usual services. Somebody travel, somebody travel, somebody travel, somebody travel, somebody travel, somebody travel, something is breaking forth, something is breaking forth, something is breaking forth. There is a move of his spirit, there is a move of his power. The fire revival is falling, the rain is coming down, there is an open heavens. He's giving us a brand new. He is giving us a brand new heart, a brand new spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mate Kapa. Rakapoli Akate. Rakapoli Akapo Papa. Rakapoli Akato Kate. Rakapiri Akate Kate. Rakapo Saka, Malua Kape Papa, Rakapita Yoha, Rakapolia Saka Pahata. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you are standing, just stand there, lift up your hands. I want you to pray this last prayer before we worship. This last prayer. Say, God, I don't want you to leave me out. Oh, lift up your hands and say this after me. God. God, I don't want you to leave me out. Don't leave me out in this revival. Don't leave me out in this glory. Don't leave me out in this power. Let your spirit come upon me. Afresh. Give me a brand new heart. Give me a brand new spirit. All damn my life to your conformity. In the name of Jesus, let me be wet with your rain. Let me be soaked with your rain. The rain of revival. In the name of Jesus, let the rain of the prophetic let it come upon me let the rain of the apostolic let it come upon me let the rain of prayer let it come upon me let the rain of purity let it come upon me let the rain of holiness let it come upon me let the rain of your blessings of your riches of your favor of your peace let it come upon me right now right now I want more of you 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 in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus lift up your hands just begin to thank him wherever you are standing don't move just stand there just begin to thank him open your mouth and begin to thank him for the revival for the move of God for the presence of God thank you Lord
Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770-941-1934 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.